Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Good morning in Asia and good late evening um, in North America. Uh, welcome to the Capital Market Development China and Asia webinar <coughs> co-organized by uh, BFI and ABF Yao in collaboration with SAIF, the, the Tsinghua Wudao Co, and the Chinese University in Hong Kong and in Shenzhen and also NUS Business School. Uh, welcome to the seminar today. We are going to feature illuminaries. Professor Tekio Hoshi, Dean of the Graduate School of Economics and Professor at the University of Tokyo, um, will present the paper, Zombies Again, the COVID-19 Business Support Programs in Japan. And Professor Ying Yi Chen, the Professor of Economics, at School of Economics, and management and also distinguished professor of arts, humanities and social science in Tsinghua. And he was previously the Dean of the SEM at Tsinghua. We are really blessed to have um, uh, Takio as the presenter and Ying Yi as, <clears throat> as the discussion tonight. And I'm very grateful because when I called Takio, I said, I really want to know more about how there's a support program to fair and who else is better to find to call Tekio and ask him to tell us more about whether the zombies are coming back. So Tekio, the floor is yours. You have about 30 minutes uh, based on our discussion and Ying Yi will have about 15 minutes to do his discussions and then we open the floor. Tekio, please, the floor is yours. It's my pleasure to give a talk at this webinar series. Uh, I have uh... Uh, attended several of these in the past, and I enjoyed those as audience. So uh, today, my talk is not so much about capital market development or uh, China, but about a country in Asia, Japan. And uh, as uh, Bernie pointed out, I base this talk, or the central part of this talk, comes from my joint paper with Kenichi Ueda, who is also a uh, panelist today and uh, uh, Daiji Kawaguchi uh, with the same title of the title of the talk. And here uh, today I discussed the impacts of COVID-19 shock to the Japanese economy and especially focus on the government support program for corporations uh, as, uh, as the title suggests. So here's the uh, outline of the talk. Okay, so um, as some of you know, uh, the health impact of the COVID-19 for Japan has not been as big as other advanced countries, basically on par with other Asian countries. And, uh, and also the Japanese government imposed less restrictions, uh, even compared with some Asian countries. Uh, I think the Japanese government imposed, uh, the Japanese government economic restrictions have been lenient. Nonetheless, the Japanese economy suffers almost as much as the other countries. So that's the starting point. And uh, um, looking at this Japanese experience uh, during the COVID-19 crisis reveals two important issues about the Japanese economy. I should have included this on this outline, but I didn't. So I just talk about it now. One is that the economic growth in Japan was weak to start with, even without the COVID-19. And this explains why the Japanese economy hit hard, even with uh, lenient restrictions. Um, and second, and this is my focus today, is that the traditional policy responses to large economic crises like uh, COVID-19 or financial crisis, global financial crisis before that in Japan have some problems. And as this outline says, uh, traditionally, the Japanese government supported the troubled companies so that they can maintain the job. So they try to uh, protect the employment indirectly through the corporations rather than directly by uh, making it easy for people to, uh, come to, to uh, find another job uh, during the crisis or, or support them during the crisis. And this has been the case again, again uh, in the current crisis uh, coming, uh, caused by the COVID-19. 
And I argue this traditional policy has two potential problems. The one is uh, it protects only workers, only a part of the workers, not, it doesn't protect everybody. It protects only workers who are uh, so under the so-called lifetime employment system. And we can already see the problem of this, of, of this type happening uh, in this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And the second problem is, which is uh, what I w want to spend most of the time today, is the protection of the corporations can end up protecting those firms that uh, we shouldn't really protect, or so-called zombie firms. And uh, it's not obvious at this point because we are not quite out of the COVID-19 crisis, um, but uh, this is a potential problem. And this has been a problem in the past crisis. And uh, we, may likely to, we may likely to see the zombie problems happening again after the COVID-19 crisis is over. And hence the title of the paper, uh, Zombies Again. Okay. So uh, let me um, start talking about these. And the first slide, I, I will skip through some of the, the, the first part of the slide because uh, these are the things you have seen elsewhere. The health impact of the COVID-19 uh, for Japan was uh, pretty much the same as other Asian countries, uh, lighter than the most advanced countries. And the uh, vaccination rate was very low to start with in the spring this year or so, but now uh, the, with, with other, same with other countries on, on this table like South Korea or Singapore, uh, Japan's vaccination rate is much higher than the U US and other co uh, countries in Europe. And uh, this shows uh, Japan experience so far five waves of the COVID-19 and uh, uh, we, the sixth wave haven't started, hasn't started. And the government restriction, this is a measure uh, published by Oxford University. The government restriction uh, has been less stringent compared with other country, uh, the countries in Europe and the US. Nonetheless, the economy suffered as much as these countries. Uh, the, this is a real GDP uh, normalizing the fourth quarter of 2019 to be 100. But the employment has been very stable. So Japan has uh, succeeded in maintaining employment and avoiding unemployment rate, unemployment. And the uh, uh, figure on the right shows the active employment, which is calculated uh, from by uh, subtracting followed workers from uh, employed workers. And that decreased uh, in April of 20, 2020, but quickly recovered. So the both in terms of uh, active employment and the uh, total employment, uh, Japan has done very well. And one reason for that is that there were numerous government support which were given to corporations who maintain the employment. For example, employment adjustment subsidy is probably the easiest one to understand. Um, uh, this is given to the companies uh, which keep the workers on employment and uh, uh, follow some of those workers. The government subsidizes the cost of keeping those employers, uh, keep, keeping those workers on payroll. Uh, there were some other uh, grants the government introduced during this time, like a business conti continuity grant and so on. And in addition to those, the government, through government financial institutions and also through the private sector banks, provided concessional loans with uh, almost zero interest rate and uh, zero guarantee fee uh, for small and medium enterprises. And here we list uh, three, uh, or th three types of concessional loans, depending on the financial institutions providing those. Japan Finance Corporation, which is a government financial corporation, uh, the Shoko Chukin Bank, another uh, government uh, 
uh, related uh, financial institution and private sector bank. So for, for those, the, uh, at least partly thanks to the, the government support, the Japan was able to maintain the employment. And the important thing, the one point I want to make here is that Japan tried to protect the employment indirectly in the sense by giving money to the corporations so that they can continue employing workers rather than giving support to employees uh, or, or uh, the consumers directly. And uh, uh, the, I counted uh, which part of the economic support that the Japanese government came up with during the COVID-19 was for the corporations and uh, which part was for the uh, workers or the consumers in general. And we can get the numbers like uh, in, in, in this figure, 69% or so, the more than half or most of those, uh, the support went to corporations so that they can protect the employment rather than directly to the workers. And um, it's, not, it, it's not an exact science to uh, classify the government support to uh, the support to corporations or support to uh, individuals, but uh, this is uh, th this is some of the details of uh, what, what I did, and uh, many of us uh, here share the Chinese cultural heritage, so you can probably understand these characters. So uh, for each items on the budget, uh, I can judge uh, for for economic policy. I can judge if it's a support for corporations or support for individuals and came up with a number uh, um, like that. Uh, Takio, yeah. some of us may not read Chinese, nor oh, okay. Japanese. So uh, then this is not helpful. Uh, but so, but what I did was, so, so for those of you who can read the Chinese characters, uh, this is what I did. Uh, for those who, who have not, uh, who, who don't, uh, trust me, uh, this, this is what I did. And it's not an exact science, but uh, we can see that most of the government support went to corporations rather than directly to the workers. And this seems to be happening again in the newest supplementary budget in fiscal uh, 2021, which the government is now talking about. Most of the economic support go to corporations. And the result, as a result of these uh, government support, um, the, for, for the corporations, uh, as we saw, the employment was protected. Okay. But uh, I will skip uh, some of these uh, slides. Uh, the bank loans increased uh, because, uh, because of the concessional loans to the corporations. And the corporations were protected, in fact, during the COVID-19 crisis, uh, this, is, this is not only Japan, but the number of bankruptcies actually dropped. So the more corporations were protected, uh, even compared with the usual time. Um, and uh, again, the same figure, employment was protected. But what I want to point out uh, today is uh, there are two problems of uh, Japan's responses. It's, it's great that uh, Japanese policies protected the employment in the end, but the way they did that, uh, protect the corporations in order to protect employment, um, created two problems. The one is that it protects only workers that are under the lifetime employment system. So the workers who are outside the lifetime employment system, uh, the workers at the small firm, uh, part-time workers rather than full-time workers, uh, so-called non-regular workers, and uh, usually women uh, than men, uh, those workers are not protected. And the uh, cost of adjustment, the cost of economic crisis concentrate uh, on those people. So that's one problem. And th this we can see is already happening. Uh, documented, uh, as documented by some papers, some research papers. And the second problem, which is a focus uh, today, is 
the Japanese policies to protect corporations in order to protect employment can end up protecting zombie farms, okay, which are not viable under uh, usual circumstances, but uh, nonetheless survive because of the protection or the subsidies given by the creditors or the government. And in this case, both the government and the government financial institution. Okay. So um, we can already see that the job losses are concentrated on the, sorry, uh, non-regular workers rather than regular workers, if you look at uh, these uh, red letters and the firms with a smaller number of employees and so on. Okay, I, I show the number for September 2020 and uh, March 2009. And there are more serious studies uh, to document what kind of workers uh, were protected and what kind of jobs were lost by uh, Sagiri Kitao, uh, one of the, the colleagues here at the University of Tokyo and uh, her co-authors. And they find um, the non-regular workers uh, with uh, non-flexible jobs and most and, and usually women were, were uh, likely to have low, li likely to lose their jobs ex ante and actually lost the jobs ex post. So even even though at the aggregate level the Japanese employment has been stable and uh, employment has been protected but it wasn't the case for all the people. And uh, there, there are some studies on hidden unemployment by uh, Umeya and Takeda recently. And uh, they find that many part-time workers uh, lost the shift and they didn't receive the compensation for follow, uh, which uh, many workers were supposed to receive and so on. Now, so, so that's one problem of uh, protecting, the, uh, protecting the corporations so that they can protect uh, some core workers uh, and uh, that's the policies done by the Japanese uh, government. The second problem is the protecting corporations can also protect or, or end up protecting uh, the companies that we shouldn't protect. Those are called zombie farms. And uh, many uh, people, I assume, have heard about the zombie firm. Uh, the zombie firm is defined to be a firm that is unprofitable and would cease to exist without help from creditors and or the government. And this was initially identified uh, for the Japanese economic crisis after a Japanese banking crisis in uh, late 1990s. And I have uh, done a paper with Ricardo Caballero and Daniel Kashev. And uh, we found a zombie from uh, discouraged growth of productive firms. So the, the uh, no, non zombie companies, and then uh, reduce uh, economic growth. And after that after the initial stage of the study of the zombie farms in Japan, uh, we or people started to find the zombie problems everywhere, uh, including Europe. And I don't have the papers here, but there, there is uh, active literature on zombie farms in China uh, as well. And the policies to protect corporations, like the one Japan has been taking in order to respond to crisis, and is doing that. And, and the Japanese policy that or what Japan is currently doing uh, that can protect uh, that that can protect the zombie farm. Okay. And uh, this paper uh, that I did with. Daiji Kawaguchi and Kane Chueda um, look at uh, what kind of firms have been receiving the government support during the COVID-19 crisis to see uh, whether this support, the, this government support is likely to develop into a zombie problem, okay? 
Um, so we are still in the crisis and we don't really know what the economy will look like after the COVID-19 uh, crisis is over. Uh, so we can't say which companies end up with zombies, but we can get some suggestive evidence by looking at what kind of companies receive uh, these uh, government support uh, now, uh, whether the companies which, uh, w w which were doing uh, okay before the COVID-19 but got into trouble during the COVID-19 and they got help, or the COVID-19 support ends up protecting some of the firms which were not doing well to start with. Okay. And in order to do that, we look at the results from a survey that uh, University of Tokyo conducted jointly with uh, Tokyo Shoko Research, which is a business uh, credit information company. And uh, our finding is that the companies with lower credit scores uh, judged by the Tokyo Shoko research before the COVID-19 were more likely to receive the government support. Okay, so we, the, our main result is for uh, credit, we, we use uh, credit scores uh, attached by uh, Tokyo Shoko Research, but we also experimented with uh, looking at the profit rate and so on, and the results of the chain. So uh, this is about the survey. We conducted the survey uh, about a year ago and got the response of uh, 4,000 uh, companies, which, can we, we, which we, we can match with uh, our database. And uh, these are the six government support we looked at. We asked corporations if they receive, if they applied for the support and received those support. And uh, these are the uh, uh, average numbers uh, for the sample. The first three are uh, government subsidies and grants. And the last three uh, are the concessional loans by uh, Japan Financial Corporation Shoko Chukin Bank and all uh, private sector banks. And as you can see by looking at the uh, average number for applied and received, these are pretty much the same. Um, so uh, the, for many of these are government support, if the corporations applied for those and if they were eligible, they were some eligible criteria, they get it. So uh, the rejection rate is very small. So I don't read uh, very much out of the difference between applied uh, but not received uh, companies. And the TSR credit scores, uh, this is how they come up with the credit scores. They basically look at the performance and the likely performance in the future to judge the credit worthiness of the company. Now, uh, this is probably the most informative figure uh, that we can look at. So what this does is to divide up the sample into like a 20 groups, depending on the credit scores in 2019, and calculate how much proportion of uh, those companies received a certain government support. So for example, uh, in this case, uh, we look at the employment adjustment subsidies. And for each credit score in 2019, we can calculate the proportion of the company who apply to uh, uh, employment adjustment subsidies and uh, received employment adjustment subsidies. Okay. And as I said, I don't distinguish these two graphs uh, very much. or We can't really distinguish these two graphs very much. And the point is, the, if you just look at these graphs, the, you can fit the negatively sloped lines, which suggests the companies which had low credit scores in 2019 were more likely to receive these uh, government support in 2020. Okay? In other words, the companies 
which were not doing well before the COVID-19 uh, ended up receiving or ended up uh, being more likely to receive those supports. Okay. And uh, this is for the concessional loans for Japan Finance Corporation, the Shoko Chukin Bank, and the private sector banks. We, for all of these, we find the low, lower credit score companies were more likely to receive those concessional loans. Okay, so this is without controlling for anything. Uh, so we, we can, for example, expect the companies uh, which suffered more during the COVID-19 crisis were more likely to apply and receive these government support. And it may be the case those companies which suffered more in 2020 or the, during the COVID-19 crisis uh, had low credit scores in 2019, even without, uh, without the COVID-19 or before the COVID-19. So there, there may be some serial correlation in the, uh, the performance. So we do a regression analysis and uh, we in addition to the credit score of uh, in 2019, we include the size of the COVID-19 shock, which is measured basically by the sales decline uh, during the 2020. Okay, and we, 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 we do this in several ways. And also we include sales prospects of 2021, uh, looking from a 2020, uh, how is the sales prospects in 2021, given the COVID-19 shock happened? Okay, so there, there may be some differences there. Uh, we control for firm size, industry, and region. That doesn't change the result. And the firms with a low credit score in 2019 were more likely to be assisted by the government support program, even with these controls. Okay, and I show you one example of uh, such regression analysis. Here we tried uh, ma many things as we always do. Okay, so the credit score of 2019 is a key variable we look at. We include all of these uh, controlled variables, including sales prospect of 2021, or the minimum of the sales growth which is often negative uh, between February and September 2020. And we included prefecture dummies, uh, two digit industry dummies. And this is specification five, which includes uh, prefecture dummies and the two digit industry dummies. And instead of a uh, minimum of the sales growth, we include the bin dummy variables for minimum sales. Okay, so instead of a including this in linearly, we include, we uh, entertain the possibility that there was some nonlinear relation. So we use uh, this uh, specification five as a baseline uh, specification. But the point here is that uh, regardless of the specification, we get a uh, negative sign, a negative coefficient on credit score of 2019, which suggests the companies which were not doing well even before the COVID-19, uh, were more likely to receive uh, these uh, government support. And uh, so, so this is a regression result, just reporting the coefficient on the coefficient estimate on TSR credit score in 2019 for all of these uh, government support programs we look at, uh, everywhere we find the negative sign. Now, one thing we wondered is the well, well, one thing we, we uh, need to note is that the companies which were uh, which were not doing well, uh, companies uh, which had a low credit score in 2019, were not necessarily zombies. Okay, and there are many definitions of zombies. Um, many studies. Uh, 
many studies define zombies to be uh, low, the companies with uh, low performance, like a low profit rate. So if we use that type of definition of zombies, the, the, looking at, the, the, looking at the, the credit scores in 2019 will very much, will, will be very much close to looking at the zombie company. Okay, but uh, here we define the zombie companies to be the companies which had uh, extremely low interest payments. So this is the original definition, operational definition done by uh, Caballero and uh, Kashyap and me. And the, if we use this measure, which measures the, uh, which looks at, which identify the companies which were supported by the creditors, or in, in this case, uh, maybe government, it, then the many firms with the low credit scores in a sample turned out to be, they were not zombies in this sense. That is, they were not protected before the COVID-19. So what we are finding here is that these companies which had uh, low credit scores, which were not performing well before the COVID-19 are now more likely to receive the COVID-19 support and that may turn them into zombies. So these were not protected before the COVID-19, but uh, in a sense, thanks to the COVID-19, they get they get get, get help from the government, and uh, they may be able to survive. So they may be uh, likely, or they, it, it's likely uh, they may become zombies in the near future. Okay. Thank you. About yes. two or three more minutes. Yes, I'm just uh, ending. I'm just ending with uh, one. Uh, Course, one, one slide which shows a weakness of a paper. Uh, that, that is, uh, there is a sample selection problem. Okay, so uh, if we look at the distribution of credit scores in 2019 in our sample, which is red, and compare that to uh, credit scores into the distribution for the whole sample in uh, TSR, or, or actually the the companies who are not included in a sample, okay, who didn't respond to uh, our survey, then these are different companies. So uh, our, our sample, uh, under sample, uh, those companies with uh, very low credit scores, so that's a limit uh, to our study. So we need to be careful in, uh, extending or in uh, interpreting our, inter our results. So here's a summary, which is the same as outline. So let me stop. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we really enjoyed the presentation and maybe may I now invite uh, Ying Yi Chen to discuss the paper, please. Yes, um, I enjoy reading the paper and uh, uh, just hear the uh, Takeo's presentation. Uh, I think this is very interesting research, not only uh, very relevant for Japan and for um, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but also I think uh, there are general issues, underlying issues um, about the uh, government policy and uh, uh, its implications. Um, there are all of the countries uh, in the world that in responding to the COVID-19 uh, implemented various government supporting programs. And um, as the paper shows that in Japan, the good news is the job losses are low in general and corporate failures are low. So these are the uh, great achievements due to the government support uh, programs. However, there are problems um, behind these success. Uh, this paper or this presentation uh, actually um, highlights uh, two types of uh, problems. Uh, the first type is about 
jobs. Um, Takeo cited two papers by Kikuchi and his co-authors. The general problem is uh, less protection for non-regular, non-flexible, uh, social industries, women, and young workers. And this is not quite, this is not surprising. And uh, because the uh, workers in lifetime employment uh, firms are better protected. The presentation focuses on the second set uh, of uh, problems that is about um, the firms. <laughs> And uh, Takio and his co author uh, did uh, research on this. And the main finding is that uh, low credit score firms apply more for help and they get more. Uh, they got more help from the government or from the bank. So this is the key finding, and I think this is an important finding, and we really need to take it very, very seriously. Uh, the low credit score firms, by the way, uh, I, uh, Takio already mentioned, I want to emphasize, this is the low credit score, uh, refers to the credit scores in, in 2019, before, uh, COVID-19. So this is the before the crisis. Uh, they got um, more help uh, from the government agencies in terms of uh, employment subsidies, continuation grants, rent subsidies, as well as concessional, concessional loans from financial institutions, including both government financial institutions and the private sector banks. So this is a very, very robust result. Uh, there are two types of a government support. One is directly, uh, uh, is direct subsidies for employment, for uh, uh, rents, et cetera, but also uh, from banks, financial institutions, and also within the financial institutions, um, financial institutions include both government financial institutions as well as private sector institutions. So this is a very, very robust uh, result. <clears throat> now, what's the problem? The problem is, as this, the title of this uh, paper implies, they very much worry about the zombie problem. So what is the zombie problem? Generally speaking, this problem refers to the unprofitable firms or unproductive firms. They do not exit uh, because of the variety of subsidies from creditors or from the government. What's the consequence? The consequence is because of the financial resources uh, scarce, so they crowd out more productive firms. And uh, um, Takeo and his co-authors uh, did research for Japan in the 1990s and early 2000s. They found evidence of uh, the zombie problem in Japan. So that's actually that their uh, research and also give them worries about the zombie problems um, in Japan um, because of the uh, COVID-19. I just want to add that this is indeed a very general problem. The zombie problem is also a serious problem in China and um, maybe in a different context. In China's case, it's more likely happen uh, among the state-owned enterprises or the private enterprises have a strong local government connections or local government support. Uh, that this is a very different context, but I think the issue is general. And Taki also mentioned the evidence in, in Europe. Uh, so I think this is a general issue and a legit, legitimate worry. Now, uh, as I mentioned, also Takio emphasized, these are low credit scores, uh, the uh, credit scores in 2019. Um, 
And also um, they pointed out that the low credit score firms are not by definition zombie firms. In fact, they showed us an inverted U-shaped curve of the relationship between the credit scores and whether they were zombie firms defined empirically uh, uh, before 2019. So uh, there are firms, they have very low credit scores, uh, high credit scores. There were some, not zombie firms at the time. However, they argue that they could be zombies reserves in the sense that um, because of the government support programs, uh, they were saved uh, during the pandemic. So therefore uh, they became, uh, they will become in the future zombie firms. So this imply a long-term restructuring problem. So that's the, uh, uh, the, uh, the worry and the, uh, the issue that they, they focus on. So that's, I think that's a very, um, uh, very important observation and finding. And uh, uh, we learned a lot from this, uh, from this research. Um, I want to raise a few questions for further discussions uh, in this context. The first question is that why low credit score firms receive more help? Um, it seems to be that the, the results are very robust. So that's why it becomes an interesting question. Um, to start with that, not as we know that not the many low credit scores were not zombies before uh, the COVID-19 pandi uh, pandemic. Perhaps that, this is just my guess, perhaps that low credit score firms uh, before the pandemic uh, are more vulnerable during the pandemic. So therefore they need more help, other things being equal. Now I noticed that the, uh, they run um, several regressions, try to control their shocks like sales, profits, et cetera. Um, so here, my point is that maybe this vulnerability uh, goes beyond those measurable controls. Um, for example, um, low credit score firms employ more non-regular, non-flexible women, young workers. That's the first point, first findings that identified uh, in this presentation. Uh, that also fits very well to the observation that Japan, as well as China and many other Asian countries, the government support more went to the uh, um, uh, to corporations and institutions rather than um, uh, rather than individuals. This is, I think this is a general pattern. I think that maybe the reason is that exactly the government wants to channel the money to the corporations to address some issues uh, in other countries that can be addressed by a direct subsidies to individuals. Here, it just goes to an indirect way to help um, uh, those, uh, for example, non-regular uh, or women or non-flexible workers. So that's a channel uh, go indirectly. So I think that fits very well to the observation that's uh, government help, 70% went to the institutions, only 30% went to individuals. So that's maybe one possibility I just want to uh, mention. That's also linked from the first set of observation and the second set of observation. And also fits very well to the, to the real results after controlling all these financial variables, we still observe the very robust results. So that's one for discussion. The second is, let's suppose um, uh, there is a zombie uh, reserve problem. So what are the better alternatives? I noticed that in the paper, uh, not in, even though not in the, uh, uh, not in the uh, um, 
presentation is the private banks actually behave very so-called rational. They behave differently for standard loans and concessional loans. You know, concessional loan means you give uh, loans at a very low interest rate, you do not ask many questions, et cetera. They behave very different, so uh, statistically very different. Um, actually, the difference between standard loans and concession loans is that concession loans are fully guaranteed by the federal government. They used to be guaranteed by 80%, but because of the pandemic, are guaranteed by 100%. So government full guarantee for concessional loans may be a problem. If we do think a Zambi problem or the problem identified uh, by the paper is a serious problem, then the root problem is the government guarantee for concessional loans. It's not the private bank's behavior because they are quite rational uh, to do things. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the second point for discussion. The third is about uh, public bank's behavior. I also uh, noticed this is also uh, uh, through the figures uh, just shown during the presentation that Interestingly, the applications for concessional loans from a Shokuchukin bank seem lower uh, uh, as compared to Japan Finance Corp. There's two public uh, financial institutions. The one is Japan Finance Corp, another is the uh, uh, Shokuchukin bank. And the difference is Japan Finance Corp is 100% owned by the central government. But Shoko Chukin Bank is 50% uh, owned by the central bank, the rest owned by business associations and, uh, and et cetera. So maybe that the government full ownership is a problem here uh, to provide more help uh, for low credit, uh, low credit for firms. So they're just acting uh, because their owners ask them to do things. So these are the three questions I just uh, put up. And I think there are, these are general issues, not just Japan. I do see the ownership issues, the public uh, guarantee issues, and the how to channel support uh, for those people who need to be helped. Other general issues, not only during crisis, but also at other times as well. Thank you very much. I learned a lot from this uh, presentation. Well, thank you, Yingyi, and thank you, uh, Takio. Um, Takio, do, do you want to do you want to have a quick response before I open the floor? Uh, sure. Uh, th thank you, Yingyi, for the very nice or actually clearer uh, presentation of my paper than I did. Um, and you raised the three questions. I think all, all of those are important and uh, interesting ones. The difference between JFC and Shoko Chukin Bank, I, I think your uh, guess is probably your your guess is promising. So we 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 want to if we can check that, that would be great. Um, and uh, why low credit firms received more help? Uh, that's important. And again, uh, the, your your guess, I I guess here we can actually check if that's the case. That uh, sounds reasonable. So that's a very good point. And the better alternatives or the standard loans uh, is uh, different from uh, concessional loans, as you pointed out in a paper. Um, and that may be important. So it's a moral hazard introduced by the government is a problem. And I think it's likely. I, I, if I can just add a one thing is, even if we don't find the low credit score firms received more help, uh, you know, if we if we find that all the firms uh, received help, uh, that still uh, uh, that that still points to a pro potential problem of zombies because uh, the, it, uh, it says at least uh, it includes uh, it, it pro the protected companies includes some uh, problem forms which wouldn't have been protected without the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, now let me open the floor. Um, Michael, it seems that you uh, you, yes, have, you. Uh, you have comments. Yes, yeah, so uh, 
this is very important issue. I guess it's uh, still too early to see kind of long-term welfare implications. Uh, but, you know, um, I have two questions. So the first is uh, very much related to Yi's first uh, point. So uh, to what extent you, you think, you know, low credit score firms are actually problematic? Um, for instance, you know, low, we, we, I think you, you can check, you know, if the low credit score firms are actually low TFP firms. Um, if that's true, then it will give uh, uh, more credit to, to the argument. But I don't see why it has to be the case to begin with. Actually, low credit score firms could be small firms. Uh, their growth could be stronger. So I'm not so sure if there is any uh, data in the past that could actually back up uh, this, uh, this argument. Uh, that's my first question. And the, the second question is, uh, I found one result uh, uh, very interesting and a bit puzzling. Uh, so in one of the regressions you show us, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the likelihood uh, for firms to apply or uh, to receive uh, support is uh, uh, uncorrelated with or weakly correlated with uh, firm sales, but strongly correlated with uh, firm employment. So uh, it means, you know, um, holding a credit score constant then larger firms with more employment are more likely to apply or to receive uh, you know, uh, those uh, supports. And how do you interpret that? I find this is, uh, is interesting, puzzling. Interesting in the sense that it's kind of uh, 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 hinting uh, your story uh, makes a lot of sense. The larger firms are more likely to be zombie firms and they are receiving support, or there are even some interesting political economic story there. But puzzling in the sense that, you know, larger firms are more likely to survive. And it's supposed, uh, you know, those, uh, those su supports uh, should be directed towards uh, small firms, right? And why, you know, uh, actually it turns out larger firms are getting those supports. Thanks. Uh, uh, Takio, may I may jump, uh, jump on the bandwagon on the first part of Michael's point about the low credit score. Would it be possible to argue that everyone knows that stronger credit rationing is coming? And so the riskier firms have lower credit scores are more eager to jump on the to jump uh, to jump to the rescue program. And actually the economic result could be positive. Can I add one question? It, during your presentation, the bunch of important uh, uh, a, f a figure it seems you didn't get into the details, which caused lots of confusion on my head. Which, uh, for instance, I want to know: Is it true that if you are conditional on that you were ranked as low credit score or high credit score in two thousand nineteen, what's the uh, what's the chance of you applying for the for the rate? Maybe you showed it; it wasn't clear. Then conditional on your applying, what's your what is the acceptance rate? And if you give us these two picture, then I can understand that there's a potential selection on each stage, but maybe, maybe already did it, it wasn't clear. Um, and I think it's a very important in terms of, is this because of the quality issue or because of TFP or because of the government guidance, uh, directed guidance to to, to, to to put the credit to the uh, right, right firm, whatever the right means. Tekio, you, you want to um, answer these questions first before we go to sure, the second sure. one? Uh, let, let's start with uh, Zigo's uh, question. So what we do is to look at the board, uh, probability of applying to these loans. So th those are what we mean by applied. And unconditional probability of receiving the loan. So this is not conditional on applying. And that, uh, that's an important point I didn't convey very well. So, so is it true that the, the high credit score firms are more likely to apply or less likely to apply? Less likely to apply. Okay, so that makes sense because they're better right. in a way. Okay, and the, okay. So and, uh, and more, then you more, can more. easily check the the conditionals uh, probability, right? It's just a bit, it's just uh, is that e e easy to calculate it, or not easy to calculate? 
uh, it's easy to calculate or it's easy to run the regression conditional on applying, but uh, most of these apply, most of those firms who apply get the receipt. So what we ask is get, get, get the funding or the get support. So what we ask is if they applied for these support and uh, have they received the support. So there may be some companies which applied but had not received those support at the point that we asked. So I don't think we can learn a lot by looking at the conditional probability of receipt. And the Bernie's point and related to Michael's point, uh, that, uh, no, that, that's an important point. We haven't checked the productivity of these firms uh, or, or the type of, for, type of the firms, if they were some new firms which had a low credit scores, but the promising uh, future or something like that or uh, riskier forms uh, that Bernie pointed out. So, so there, there, there may be a possibility that uh, it, it's good these low credit firms have uh, more access to these loans at this point. So, but, but we, don't, we, we don't know, we haven't uh, looked at those. Um, employment issues, uh, what Michael pointed out. This is for, I think, the example of a regression analysis I showed, which is for employment adjustment subsidy, or this is subsidy for not adjusting their employment, basically. Um, those are given uh, to, go, give, given in like 80% uh, of the compensation the firm paid for followed workers or something like that. So if you employ more workers, uh, you get more subsidy. And if we assume the cost of applying for the subsidies is fixed, uh, large firms have, uh, in a sense, large firms get more for the same cost. So that would be one possibility. And I don't remember if the employment matters for concessional loans or not, but uh, that's something I, I need to look at. Thank you. I'm going to now turn to Xiao Yan and then uh, Jun Peng sorry, and sorry, then... Sorry, can I... Uh, yes, oh, can okay, can, can yeah. you can add. So that the last point, the employment uh, uh, coefficient is actually reported in a uh, in paper. And then uh, other than the employment uh, subsidy, usually it's a not really significant. So the employment is not so much significant. And other thing is, we, we talked about a lot about the uh, meaning of this uh, things, why the low credit score firms got more. And by the way, first of all, we, we have to say that government program are not the, per se depending on the credit score or per se depending on the, uh, debt ratio or something. It's just about sales drop. Sales drop is a very simple criteria for any government uh, support program. So the, from the program design itself point of view, if it's somehow discriminating or somehow different effect in among farms, that uh, it's not really uh, objective of the program. The, the second issue is more, 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 more like economics point of view with uh, such a program that discriminatingly discriminatingly uh, supporting more on the low credit score firms is good or not is another question uh, which uh, we see if the condition is the same why then the low credit score firms ap apply and receive more than the high credit score firms two issues we are, we are discussing in the paper first one is why the high score firms are not applying that's most likely coming from either the stigma or someone says uh, they don't like to have government or banks to dogging into more on their balance sheet and operations. That's why they're a little bit less, a little bit reluctant to applying and receiving. That's I think we understand. But the second point is why the low score guys are apply and also banks are giving more to the loans compared to before 
uh, or compared to standard loans, loans uh, the question because this time uh, government uh, support coming to two things, especially loan side. One is 100% guarantee. Previously, it's essentially 80% guarantee for SME loans. That's already there because that's why we have lots of zombie problem already there. But it's in addition, it's 100% guarantee on loan. So it's, there's no risk of lending. And the second, also that any interest uh, rate, uh, it's already lower rate, uh, asking from banks to firms are all subsidied back from government. So the, from the company's point of view, uh, they don't have to pay even the interest. From the bank point of view, the, the client firms now suddenly become no risk and also in terms of default and also no risk of getting any interest payments because interest payments coming from government. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there's a suddenly huge incentive to lend to those uh, very bad firms. And, and this is, is good or bad? I mean, the question is, we usually think in a, in, a, in, a, in a financial system study, we think the macro level liquidity should be given by central bank or perhaps some fiscal policy, whatever the macro policy. But in the allocation of the funding should be through the private sector scrutiny, right? But those, but in the current, 100% guarantee and 100% interest rate paid by government to banks are totally killing any private sector financial <laughs> system function. That, that we are talking about creating a huge problem in the future if we continue to do so. Right now, it's still kind of continuing. Well, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, and thanks for your patience. Uh, your turn, please. Okay, uh, uh, my questions are quite simple. Uh, my, I have a couple of small questions. My number one question also, as uh, Professor Chen mentioned, that uh, for Japanese government and Chinese government, they tend to give more resources to the farms rather than individuals. I just want to understand the reasoning behind it, because the big allocation, you know, firms or individuals, how that's considered. My second small question is, so the, from the previous financial, uh, global financial crisis, um, you know, there was some, you know, rescue program there. Did they learn anything that they actually Im implemented this time? My third small question is for the current rescue plan, is there a deadline? Um, when can we see the final results? That's all I have, thank you. Um, I see that uh, uh, be before I turn to the authors, uh, let me see, let me, let me pick up uh, Junpeng's uh, question, please. Hey, thanks, uh, Bernie. Uh, I had the same, uh, I said, had the same kind of uh, issues with, uh, with Zhiguo. So before we can get to the zombie questions, I think understanding the firm's choice to apply for this uh, subsidy or or apply for these loans will be really important. So there are some really interesting plots where you plot, for example, subsidy as a function uh, of uh, credit scores. And you can see even within the different type of subsidy, the slope is very different. So I wonder um, the probability of applying to this subsidy across different uh, credit scores, if that is a reflection that uh, this subsidy has uh, filters, like you have to um, meet certain criteria so that you can apply and get to these subsidies. Is that the reason why, for example, you look at the employment, it's really flat. Your high credit score, low credit score, they have very similar fraction of uh, applying to the subsidy. Then you go to the continuation subsidy, it's very steep. And then when you move on to the um, to the um, to the loans, so he made this observation. Uh, Shoko Chuki banks, you look at again, you look at the application, it's very flat. But you move on to JFC, it's very steep. So he made the interpretation, maybe Shoko Chuki is 50-50 in terms of government own and the private. But then you look at the private banks, it's also very steep. So these patterns, I think, 
you probably need to understand these patterns much better before you can make further interpretations. Uh, I think this is the first stage understanding, uh, you know, otherwise it's, it's very, I mean, I had the same brainstorm in my head as Zhuguo when I look at these plots and I want to understand them more. But, but it's very interesting. I, I think this is a very interesting data to, to understand this better. Thanks. Uh, thank you. We, um, we have a few more minutes left. Do you want to uh, respond to this? Sure. Uh, starting with uh, June's point, uh, those are uh, very good point. And uh, those graphs are uh, uncontrolled graphs, so without controlling with uh, employment and, and other things. So the very different slopes across the program uh, partly comes from uh, the different impacts of those control variables, like uh, employment. Uh, and another thing is, as you suggested, there's an eligibility criteria, which are slightly different from all, all of these uh, programs. So that, uh, you know, I, I need to think about how these differences uh, generate a different result, but uh, that, uh, that's probably uh, another thought. So we try, we, we do the regressions only for eligible forms or what we, as far as we can observe eligible from, and the result doesn't change. So I, I, I think the result stays, but uh, we haven't paid a lot of attention on the difference of slopes at this point. And KNEG probably can add later, uh, but before I turn to KNEG, uh, Xiaoyan's point, uh, that's, uh, that's an important observation. Give, give, give more to firms uh, than to individuals. And uh, I, I guess uh, we, we can come up with uh, some guess. It's easier to give money to a smaller, small number of firms rather than to give or protect the lots of unemployed people. But, uh, uh, but that's for, for some reasons that seems to be the case for Japan. And I don't know about China and I'm pointing out that there's a problem. So uh, coming back to the question by uh, Ingi on better alternative, I think one better alternative we should consider is uh, rather than protecting these corporations so that they can pro we can protect the employment or workers, uh, if we can come up with uh, different types of uh, safety net for workers who lose jobs. Kenichi, do, do you would like to add something? Yes, just one adding one observation is that we all Japan is somehow always full, full employment level, by the way, and then overall in the macro sense. And this mm -hmm. time, uh, uh, also some uh, industries, especially, uh, you know, Amazon's uh, truck drivers or uh, Uber uh, Eats drivers, and those guys, mm -hmm. as well as any programmers uh working on a digital uh digitalized society for online site what, whatever the companies those high high tech companies we are totally lacking those guys and those industry actually growth rate is quite quite high past two years because mm -hmm. of huge demand mm -hmm. while they need really workers while government keeping workers in those restaurants and and and, and you know hotels and those places where we don't really need the workers, at least these two years, or maybe more, right? <laughs> that, that's really a problem because, because of this, uh, we, we, I, I don't think we will have a huge improvement from when the government lowers the support uh, program at supporting you know, employment at current farms. That's what, what, what the government do. But what the government should do is, uh, we need, probably government need to support some of the employment, but not at the current place because we need uh, workers in the other places, right? Yeah. That would be a better better policy, I, I believe. We, we, we are running short of time. I think we're running towards the time limit. Can I pitch a last minute interpretational comment? If I were running the show, I were the Ministry of Finance and so on and so forth. And at that point, we are really trying to stem the externality of massive bankruptcy and unemployment. So whom am I going to save? I'm going to save those who are most likely to go bankrupt. 
So uh, if the policy objective is to stem the massive negative externality of massive bankruptcy and, and, and unemployment, then the government is doing the right thing. Am I wrong? Well, they end up protecting if, the firms uh, which wouldn't have been protected if there wasn't crisis. No, but if they stop the policy early enough, then they will be okay. No. So your point about the policy is still continuing is the problem. No, Bernie, what I see is that from the whole discussion at the, at the global financial crisis, it's, it's maybe wrong, but my, my view is if indeed need to pro protect government, will, need, will be bailing out the banks. In, in the end, mm -hmm. somehow and capital injection. But because of that, we have we we asked we have been strengthened bank uh, supervision and also regulation past ten years because protection means moral hazard. To to lower the moral hazard, we we introduced strengthened regulations. But we are not strengthening, or we don't really have any regulation or supervision for the old farm, especially SMEs. No. And we shouldn't do so because it's very costly to <laughs> supervise all the SMEs or, or introducing regulations, capital regulations, the SMEs. I think it's better to, if we, if we, 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 even if we have a bankruptcy, I think it's enough to bail out the farm, uh, to bail out just banks, and also storing the regulation is enough, not to really helping farms. I, that's my sense. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're running towards the end of the program. Uh, let me turn to my collaborator, uh, co-organizer of BFI, Zhiguo. Any comments from you? Can, can I add um, one, one thing? Can, can, can I add one, one thing? Can I respond to the most important question asked by Xiaoyan, which I didn't do so? And I thought her question on uh, have, have we learned from the past? is a very important question. And my answer is we haven't, no, uh, and we should this time. <laughs> okay, Thanks. Chico. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I, unfortunately, Bernie, uh, what will be the next? <laughs> Um, the next <laughs> one will be, the next one? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it. The next one will be, uh, back to China, we're going to have January 13th, investing with the government a few experiments ah, yes, yes. in China mm -hmm. by Ernest Liu from Princeton. And the discussion is Sabrina Howell from Stern, NYU. So yeah. thank you. So welcome. Uh, we hope that uh, you will join uh, again uh, uh, one, one month from now. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to you. Yeah. So thank everyone, you. thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And I, I also would take this chance on behalf of all the collaborators, the presenters and discussions for a wonderful uh, exchange and enjoy your holiday seasons. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. And thank you.